Hi, I'm Ben from Echion. In this episode, we're going to be watching Lockie and Nathan carrying out the very important task of laser welding. In the Land Cruiser, we have 512 cells across two sub packs. So I'll let you, the viewers, do the maths on how many individual welds we'll need to get done. If you're enjoying the series, please like, comment, subscribe, give us any feedback you want, so keep it going. Okay, so we want to uh, test our plant on, on putting these um, modules together. So I think the first thing I want to show, just want to make a big point of this. These cells are dummy cells. So absolutely nothing on them. This is a metal plate. This is all metal, um, but there's no voltage. These cells are just filled with the electrolyte, but they don't have the anode in them. So with our design, we need to take the cells that arrive like this and trim, I think it's two or three millimeters off each side. Um, there is commercial machines that do this, but we're not doing too many. So we're just gonna use a guillotine. What I've done is made up a, a jig. So slide that into the corner and this comes down, grabs the top of the cell and will give us a nice clean cut. Just cutting down that much. And then if I flip it over, do the other side. And there we go. So I will do that 32 more times. So I've just been through and cut all of them. Um, these are all the same, so cut on both sides. This one is our final negative, so that's full length. We need a bit more room to fold it over. And this one is the final positive, so they're both sides of the, the module. What we want to sort of prove today is that um, this assembly jig will actually assist us in being able to put this together safely. So the main thing we want to stop is when these cells go in there like this, if these two touch, that's not the end of the world. But if these two touch and these two touch, you're now dead shorting two of these and that will be a, an arc flash event and we just can't have that happen. So what we've decided to do is build a sort of Constantina accordion looking thing. Let us put all the cells in, but we'll make sure that these here, the tabs will never touch each other. So they slide in there and they're constrained. Um, so we're gonna attempt to put this together and uh, yeah, see if it works out. So down this side, we want this to be the negative side, final one, which has the longer tab, put that in there. All right, then make sure we keep that one separate. That's the last one. And now we can just start loading the rest of it. So the main thing we wanna be careful of is actually that we get the polarity correct. That's why these have got taped sides, red positive, black negative. So we are putting the cells in so that the polarity is reversing yes, as they so go well along. In series. If there is a the tabs touching one another, there would be a, a short event on both sides. Doing that to build the voltage. So this module is a, a, a 1P um, 32S, so one cell in parallel, 32 cells in series, which gets us to a high voltage as soon as possible. Cool. All right, so now we can bring these in. Now, we can take this side off. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that can slide off. Just like that, snaps together. 
how you do it in a manufacturing environment, but this is a, a method we've come up with to specifically do it with hand fabricated modules um, for this prototype. Because if we were to take it to a manufacturer and get it done, it would take months and months and setting up all the um, all the production lines for that would be a long time. Uh, this is for rapid, rapid prototyping, but safely. Hopefully this is as easy as yet. Um, and we've used these cells for, what, months and months, testing with them. Um, so all the tabs are a bit uh, bent in every which way, so new cells will be much easier to assemble. So that's a assembled mechanically module. Um, all the electrical connections can, can now be made. Um, and yeah, so we need 16 of these for the Land Cruiser, eight in each pack. And yeah, this will, will get us down the road. 3D printing has just been a real revolution in, in engineering prototyping like this. It's, it's enabled us to you know, print the jigs, print the actual parts, assemble it all um, with the real dimensionally correct components. Um, which is something that, you know, maybe I'm showing my age, but 10, 15 years ago, you just wouldn't be able to do it like this. So this afternoon, uh, we intend on welding our dummy module. This has been our module that we've been playing around with. Find the time that these cells will be welded together and they will hopefully never come apart ever again. This is the final step before we move on to welding the, the real tabs on the, um, on the real cells. These aren't real cells, they're representative, but we want to make sure we nail this one before we head over to the real ones. Um, yeah, so this is our laser welder. The laser welder is a handheld gun. Uh, it looks like this. Up through here, we have a fiber optic that shoots the laser uh, down to the, the end, cooling in here and a few sensors. The type of attachment we have on the end is for battery spot welding. So you can get a circular one for things like prismatic cells or, or this one here um, for, for what we're gonna do here with uh, pouch cell tabs. So essentially all you're doing is this, press the button, it does its own little process. So this is the demo one. We can get this out of the way now. Uh, this one here, is real cells. Um, so this will be the first one. We haven't welded um, any of these yet, but now we're very confident that we have all our settings uh, down pat. The laser can never uh, penetrate one of the cells. It just does not have the power to get through that much plastic, the PCB there, and the um, aluminium tabs. And the way we've made sure that the cell can't get hit sort of like this is that there's little bumpers here. So there's really no way you can possibly hold this um, laser gun in a way that would make one of the cells pop. If one of the cells did pop, uh, that would be a very bad time. Um, it'd probably be a quite a large arc flash event um, and that is something that uh, we will avoid at absolutely all costs. All right, so finished laser welding the first module. Um, so you can see that all on there. Uh, I'm just gonna get this gear off and um, we'll put a multimeter across it and see if we made a battery or not. So positive on the left, negative on the right. Here we go, 65.387 volts. So we've got a bit of a saying at switch. You're always surprised when you make a battery um, because when you add all the voltages up, you'll get a number. Put the top cover on. As we see here, number one, beautiful. Got on here, serial number and a bit of a nameplate. So capacity, nominal voltage and the voltage range of these cells. Configuration and lastly, the all important X and O lithium ion. Move on to the next one, got 16 to do, so better get going. 
Lucky, introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Lucky. Uh, built a battery. It works. How good? Hell yeah! Check it out, guys. <laughs> Can you see that it's doing all that working? Talk us through what we're looking at, Lucky. Uh, green lights, good. Do they? They're green. Yeah, they are green. Um, the cables are too long because Viv didn't look at SolidWorks correctly. <laughs> um, not my fault. Yeah, right. Oh. Uh, <laughs> it's um. Yeah. What have we got here, Iggy? We have the VMS adapter. Here we have the 16s analog front ends. Yep. And now we are going to connect all to the DC chain. Cool. And test the firmware and try to measure some voltages and temperature. Temperature. Sorry. Beautiful. Yep. So this will be the very first time we get the all the battery cells being read by the master controller itself and will allow us to start logging all of the information. And then we'll move on to charging and discharge testing. All right, cool. so do we power off and plug in? Yep. Cool, great. How exciting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That looks like it's uh, reading a lot of data. Yep. Nice. Great stuff, man. You've fucking done it. <laughs> yeah. Cool. yeah. Oh. oh yes, I'm really proud of you. <laughs> How bloody good is that? Cool. So um, we've spent the last couple of days getting our HV front plate validated, using it to test our modules. We have a basically call it a flat battery where we have all of our modules laid out on a table. They are finished and ready to go into the sub pack. But before we do that, we want to test them and make sure all of our voltages are reading correctly, our protections work, the temperatures are all correct, and there's no irregularities that we need to act on. So what we've done is we've connected all of the modules in parallel, um, allow to make sure they're all at the exact same voltage uh, to help balance them. We have then connected that to our front plate, which has um, contactors, current measurement, pre-charge, and uh, fusing. And we are using this to protect our battery bank. And then we are charging up towards a proper charge with the intention of uh, doing a balance at a higher cell voltage. Everything's gone well. We've used this time to also validate our data logging and um, our graphical user interface for doing a deep dive on all the um, data that we've captured. That's come along really nicely. And we have successfully proved our pre-charge control theory works, our contactors and everything is switching nicely. You'll see down here, we have our little master EMS, which is um, controlling all of this itself. And it is almost ready to go into the pack. If you find this interesting and you want to follow this journey, then please like and subscribe. There will be plenty more.